Hello, my name is Linda Bundestam and I'm an illustrator from Finland. Uh, I was extremely creative as a child. Uh, it was a bit like a, a volcano. <laughs> I was doing things all the time with my hands and uh, I'm a middle child and my siblings, they are very neat persons and also my parents, they like when, when things are really in order and, and everything looks nice a, a bit. Uh, they wanted their home to look a bit like, like in a hotel so everything nicely. Uh, placed and in, in, in the right order, but I was extremely creative and, and quite messy and uh, creating books and painting and sewing things all the time, doing arts and crafts. But my parents were extremely supportive and, and they let me do anything and always gave me good materials and also cleaned after me, which was fantastic because it was so easy to start new art projects when you had a clean table. Uh, I actually went to art school first in Helsinki, but it was um, like a secondary school, I think you would say, in English, uh, specializing in arts. But then I, uh, after that I went abroad, I went to London to study illustration uh, for four years. Well, I think I always was an artist, but I didn't know that uh, illustrating children's books uh, was possible to do as a profession. So I tried to think about something else uh, creative that I could do. I, I even thought I could be a furniture designer at some point, which is really funny because my style is extremely two-dimensional and I don't think I could uh, design so fast as I good looking and also functional. Uh, I really like to, to make stories uh, with my art, to tell stories and I think uh, me myself, uh, many of my best childhood memories are when I'm reading with my grandmother or my parents or, or even by myself uh, and also um, I think children's books of course, I really like children and want to make good stories for them, but I always uh, think that the best books actually uh, are those who can be read by people uh, of any age. Where they, I think it can be an artistic experience for both the children and the artists, and it doesn't have to have an age limit. Uh, yes, Ulf uh, Stark was a wonderful Swedish writer and he was actually my childhood um, hero or my idol, I think we can say. And I met him many, many years ago at the book fair in Helsinki and he came up to me and said maybe we should do something together and I was really starstruck and happy and I remember I ran to my public publisher and told her that I just talked to Ulf Stark and he wants to do something with me. And but she just started laughing and said, yeah, right, maybe he wants to have a coffee with you. <laughs> and, but then uh, after the book fair, we went to the same party and we talked some more and, and, and we decided that we would make a book together. So that's how it all started. But, uh, but he, he really wrote a lot, I think about a hundred books for children, all ages and, and wonderful stories and he wasn't I think ever scared about writing about difficult subjects. Uh, he, I think he could write about anything, but all, he always did it in a funny mm -hmm. and uh, warm way that really uh, both uh, adults and children. My little small girl, which tells the story of this grey and lonely, uh, big clumsy creature living in a cave longing uh, for someone to take care of or, or a friend but it could also I mean tell the story about a woman who, who wants to have a child or, or a woman who, or, or a man who wants to find a partner or I, I really think both adults and children find a lot in this story. Creature uh, can go out only when the sun uh, is gone. So here she is in the evening looking at the world and, and she thinks it's really beautiful.
but she's always longing to have someone to take care of. And then, uh, when I did this book, uh, Ulf said he wanted to challenge me, because most of my work is very colorful, and I think I'm known for using bright colors. But uh, in this book, it's a lot happening inside this cave and in the dark, yeah, and, and Ulf said he would like to make some uh, see what I do when I make really grey and dark pictures. But in the end I didn't do it in the way Ulf said, uh, I did it in the completely opposite uh, way. I think the book is a lot about colour and mm -hmm. the lack of Can you color. show me? So, so wow, here are many, stunning. many, many um, spreads showing all the colours in the world and mm -hmm. how beautiful it can be. all the animals that live on earth. So as you can see it's not a very grey book. <laughs> uh, in the book the creature gets to meet um, a sparkle, the baby of the sun, who uh, suddenly um, falls down to earth and lands in the cave. And they become great friends and the creature thinks that finally she has someone to live with. But it's very sad because the, this little spark can't live in the dark and she can only survive one day on earth. So she has to go back to the sun. Uh, before it sets and the creature actually sets out to save her. She runs uh, up the big mountain and, and throws her towards the sun uh, in the last minute before it sets. And it's interesting because Ulf wanted to stop the story right here and then it's really really sad because it says uh, that the creature uh, covers her uh, face uh, with her hands and in her mind she can um, she can uh, imagine all the colors and now she knows what it was to have a friend but she lost <laughs> lost it almost immediately which is really really sad and, and I found it heartbreaking so I asked you if I can make one more uh, spread and I said he doesn't have to write any text but on the last picture you can see uh, the creature walking all the way home to the uh, cave and you see that she has found something on the ground and picked it up and most children says it's an egg, uh, you can also think it's a stone or mm -hmm. something. It's more like hope, you're giving a hope. I'm, I'm giving hope and, mm. and then Ulf really liked it but he got inspired and wrote a little text also to this picture uh, and a lot of the time when I work with this book with children we talk about the story and then the ending and then the children gets to do their own books about this egg and what happens next. <laughs> um, uh, Rosabel is written by a Finnish writer called Malin Kivela and we have made three books together and Rosabel was the third one and I think uh, we got the idea uh, together somehow because I told Mali that I always wanted to make a horse book but at the same time I, don't, I think horses are really difficult to draw so uh, somehow I wanted to challenge myself and, and also I like the idea uh, with Rosabel being this really strong, uh, chubby uh, little girl who, who can survive among all the um, long-legged horses who are actually quite shallow and maybe they don't have a very interesting life. Rosabelle uh, uh, gets to do many exciting things because she's not scared and, and she's ready to, 
to escape from the stables and try new things. For example, uh, when I did Rosabel, I really had to watch horses and, and learn a lot about horses because I never knew a horse as a child, even if I liked animals a lot. Uh, so I had to go to the, uh, the stables and I even took uh, horseback riding classes <laughs> a few times and I, I just watched the horses a lot to get to know how they really look and also to, to get mm. the right feeling for the book. So I look a lot for inspiration, especially if a project feels difficult, if something is difficult to draw. And of course, um, I work quite a lot. I think I'm always, I really uh, love my uh, job, but at the same time, I quite often take on too many uh, books and there are so many uh, wonderful texts that I feel that I want to illustrate. And sometimes when you have too much to do, of course, it can be a struggle to get started and, and work hard enough. But, but I think uh, a lot of uh, the time you really have to, it's not all about inspiration, it's a lot about pushing yourself also. And then when you push yourself for a while, suddenly, suddenly you realize that something goes right or, or you something maybe goes wrong but it looks better than you thought and then you get the inspiration but it's a lot about uh, self-discipline uh, and um, let me think I'm sure I have a lot of artists who inspired me um, when I was a child my uncle inspired me a lot he's a kite artist and an architect but he makes absolutely fantastic kites that he designs uh, three-dimensional colorful objects and so he was uh, very inspiring but I also watch a lot of movies and get inspired I think it's uh, children's books are a lot about telling a story and I also go to the theater a lot I'm also part of a little theater group and that's really uh, you inspiring perform? yes <laughs> together with uh, some writers and illustrators and that's a lot of fun because illustrating can also be quite lonely and when we do something in a group uh, it's, yeah, I think it's really um, so entertaining and also uh, the dyna dynamics change when you uh, are in a group but it's still the same storytelling. And, but of course I like many uh, contemporary uh, store, uh, children's books writers and mm -hmm. illustrators a lot and of course Tuve Jansson who, is, who was a Finnish mm -hmm. children's book uh, illustrator and artist and writer I think she has inspired every Finnish artist um, um, I like being in nature a lot and usually we go to a small island with my family where we stay uh, for the whole summer and sometimes in the weekend as well and I really enjoy being in, in nature where it's uh, peaceful so I love that but I also have a dog so I like walking uh, a lot uh, outside in nature and and I, and I love of course bicycling and being with my friends and maybe I would say uh, my biggest hobby is my theatre group or at least it started as a hobby, but now we have quite a lot of um, people who have uh, hired us for different events, so it's becoming more or, less, yeah, more or less a profession, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> well, uh, I hope you will enjoy my work and I hope it will inspire you uh, to read and explore uh, more uh, illustrators and children books from the Nordic countries and yes. So where is this place? Kapelli. Kapelli Tehdas. Kapelli Tehdas. Oh. So a lot of uh, artists has a lot a, of art. yeah have a studio here. And yes, a lot, a lot, and a very creative. I see. You also have a studio here, right? Yes. And you said that you are living that side. Yes. 
I live on the island called Lauttasaari. Uh huh. To come here, are you riding a bicycle? Yes, every morning I take my bike. Wow, how long does it take? I would say maybe 12 minutes. Wow, okay. Or, or less. That's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> nice, wow. Look at the view. And it's a nice contrast because this place looks very industrial. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The island where I live is there, you get a lot of nature and. Right. This building used to be a, a factory a before? For cables. Okay. Oh, for cables? Yeah. It's ah, the cable no wonder. Yeah. I see. Uh, Carpet means uh -huh. cable. Ah, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> A few years ago, we used uh -huh. to have a garden here. Oh, they why they changed. removed? They oh. wanted the sauna. Oh, <laughs> so, sauna, good. Yeah, I Bin guess. Finland is a very cold country, so you need a sauna. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's a theater. Wow. So sometimes there, there are some plays here? Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. Because many don't have them at home. Right, so they're making like a buildings and stuff. Buildings and all sorts of. Interesting. It's interesting. 